Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for another quick demo. This one's going to be utilizing ServiceNow to do self-service troubleshooting. So the idea being this is a Windows computer. I, uh, you know, one of the clients on my Active Directory domain, they can't get to say a website or possibly a TCP based service. So now I'm going to give them a means to actually initiate some troubleshooting on its own, do triage, and then uh, create an incident from it. So as this client, I'm going to pop in here to my ServiceNow catalog. I'm going to go to the Service Catalog section and I'm going to just do the, uh, the one I created here called Tower Web TCP Troubleshooting. So here I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to do website testing. So I'm going to do HTTP colon forge lawyer slash Greg soul dot com. Uh, enter the PC name bottom right corner of your desktop near the volume control. See that right there? Client one, client one. And so all of this is going to be detailed in the blog post uh, that I'm going to have in the uh, description of this. Or if you're getting here from the blog post, you're going to see all this. So it tells you about how you create this connection between um, ServiceNow and uh, Ansible Tower. Michael Ford actually did a tremendous job of creating a blog post that kind of details how to tie those together. I'm just building upon that to add some additional interesting bits. So now that we've created all of that, I'm going to click order now. It should um, kick off a few things. Sorry. So the request is in 1000 or no 10,036. I'm going to pop over to Tower just so you can see that yes, uh, a job is magically running. So uh, ServiceNow actually reached out to Tower and passed a bunch of information. If I pop in here, you're gonna see that it passed over the machine name, client one, it passed over the website, and then if it was a TCP based service, this would actually have something interesting in there. So what's actually going on under the hood? What's now happening? So if I take a look at these slides, this is kind of my uh, default environment. So right here, I've got the client machine. I've got my Ansible Tower infrastructure. So my Ansible automation platform right here. And then I've got my domain controller, my Windows domain controller. Here is my ASAV firewall. Here's my outside canary. And then here's the website I'm trying to reach. So the very first thing that happens is the user pops into Snow or ServiceNow, however you want to refer to it. I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm going to say Snow. He goes into Snow. He does a self-service ticket. And then uh, Snow calls the Ansible API. And this is one of the most interesting features of Ansible Tower, in my opinion anyway, is having this API. So you can have these external tools that already exist, say Snow, for example, if that's your self-service portal, it can actually reach out to Tower and start performing all these automation tasks completely hands off for me, right? So they call uh, Tower, they send over the uh, destination and source right of um, what are they trying to get to so I'm trying to get to gregsoil.com just HTTP and then um, what's it coming from it's coming from client one next thing it does tower reaches out to the domain controller and does uh, multiple hops so he hops from the domain controller over to the client and he instructs the client hey basically do a curl command kind of a Windows based curl command uh, via PowerShell and try and get to gregsoil.com so it'll pull that information it's looking for status code so it wants to see status of 200 right which is everything is okay and then it's also pulling how many bytes it downloaded so how much or rather how big was the web page that it pulled next thing tower is going to do is from my domain controller it's going to do the exact same test right so inside my network i'm doing multiple tests identically right trying to um uh, i guess eliminate variables see if it's one thing or another Next thing it's going to do, Tower's going to reach out to a Canary device. So I have a device outside of my network, right? This is going to be my control node, my um, my safety, right? So I can try and uh, figure out is it an issue directly inside my network, right? Or is it something um, that's widespread, right? It gives me just multiple test points. After it does that, it's going to check. So in my scenario, I've actually got a firewall rule that's blocking client one from getting to regular HTTP web pages, right? TCP port 80, it's blocking that just for the demonstration purposes here. And so since it sees that client one failed, it's now going to connect to my firewall. And in this case, it's an ASAV and it's going to use the packet tracer command. 
So Packet Tracer is really interesting in the ASCs. What it does is it creates a virtual packet and it moves it through the firewall. And it, you know, it goes through the, um, the regular firewall rules. It'll go through any manipulations, any natting. And it shows you every step along the way what happens. And at the very end, it basically says this was allowed or this was denied. So I can see in the end, hey, was this client, you know, theoretically, was this client supposed to be able to move through the firewall? Right. Yet another test point. Once it completes all of that, it takes all that information and it starts uh, stepping through kind of a decision tree. So at the top, it says, hey, if all the tests pass, so if client one um, pulls 200, um, domain controller and canary all pull 200 and all of their uh, return packets or rather um, pulled web page sizes, the byte count is virtually identical. I think I give like a, a 10 byte margin, something like that, not a whole lot. So as long as it's pretty much identical, it'll pass back to the client or rather uh, service now, it'll um, set the message to say, hey, can you please retest our automation looks like everything seems to be up, right? The firewall was allowed. Um, and a lot of times, right, when you're accessing resources on the internet, that's exactly the case, right? Something will be down for two minutes or three minutes or whatever it happens to be may only be 30 seconds, but that cloud-based service is unavailable, right? Whether the hosted provider was having a problem, there's a rerouting issue out on the internet. And so by the time they actually go in there and tell ServiceNow to perform these tests, everything comes back clean. So if it comes back clean, um, I'm going to instruct the user, hey, give it another test really quick. And I bet 50% of the time the service is going to be back up and this ticket's just going to auto close and I never had to do anything. So not only does it set that message, but it also sets which group this should be assigned to. And in this instance, I'm just going to assign it to help desk. Now step down the chain a little bit right here. So say for example, the client fails, he can't reach it, but my domain controller and my canary all returned identical results and the firewall says this packet should be passed through. What I'm going to do then is it sounds like a personal PC issue. So I'm going to make a message related to that and I'm going to assign it to service desk now instead of help desk to take a look at this. Right, stepping down, say the client and the firewall fails. So this client obviously isn't allowed through the firewall. I'm going to set that to network. Let those guys take a look at it. Right. So on down the list, you can figure out whatever combinations of failures and successes will result in what message you want to be sent to the customer, as well as what group they're going to be assigned to. Once all of that's completed, right, once you step through the decision tree and it ultimately makes its decision on what it's going to do, it creates an incident, you know, kind of, um, uh, an error ticket or a trouble ticket, I should say, in service now assigned to the proper group. So all that should have had time to complete. So I'm going to pop into my service now instance. I'm going to go to the incidents. I'm going to come over here to all. And I'm going to pull the newest incident. So as you can see, I have it uh, give a short description of automated troubleshooting and the request that it was actually created off of. Pop into the incident itself. And I can see, let me actually switch the view. Sometimes not everything is shown in there. So I'm going to show default view, I believe. Yeah, default view. So I can see the message automation show clients fail or rather client fails, but all else works, right? And I could add additional information. So this is kind of a sanitized version. I don't want, you know, too much cluttering it up. So you can basically tell, oh, client failed, everything else got 200s and the firewall passed. Um, I could also attach all that detailed information and I may at a future date decide to do that. But also you can see up here, it was assigned over to service desk, or rather the assignment group is now service desk and the caller, the person who created it was in fact that user, Craig Soul. So aggregates all that information together and does that automated triage. So my thinking is, Say you've got a thousand users and you get two or three requests, maybe. Maybe you get two requests a day like this, right? Each one of these requests is going to burn, I don't know, 30 minutes, right? So that's an hour of time. Maybe not a big deal for a big team, but now imagine you've got 30,000 users, right? And so instead of an hour, you've got 30 hours of troubleshooting. So imagine that this could alleviate 
you know, 75% of that time, it could get you to resolution quicker. So one, that's saving time for your team, right? Time equals money. Time equals you being able to focus on important projects. And then also the customer is going to have an elevated experience, right? Their time to resolution is much quicker. So what really interests me is how would you use something like this in your environment? You know, what are those top tickets that you see coming into your ticket system and how could you conceivably automate some of the troubleshooting, maybe even some of the repair to that. So thank you guys. Please leave any questions or comments below and I'll see you next time.